everyone. Welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little reindeer trio. I think it looks very farmhouse and it was made from Dollar Tree items. So the first thing I started off with was these plastic reindeer that were encrusted in glitter that I got from the Dollar Tree. So I took them up to the bathtub because I didn't have anywhere big enough to soak them. And they're made of plastic, so soaking them is okay. So I soaked them in the bathtub for about a half an hour and kind of just used a sponge to scrape off what I could. And I also used a scraper to, to get them clean. Now, this is what they look like when the glitter is off. And I did end up having to soak them a second time to try to get the edges off and I finally gave up on getting the edges clean because it was just too much and I was doing a red based wrapping paper on them anyway. So here's where I was using one of those metal scrapers from the Dollar Tree and I was just scraping off the glitter after they soaked for about a half an hour and it was coming off in pretty good sized chunks and it made it a lot easier. All right, y'all, I am so sorry that I had to do some still shots of that first part of the process. I just don't have a way to set my video camera up in other places, and I couldn't figure out how to get my phone to stay on the tripod uh, above the water. I was a little nervous about that. So anyway, I wanted to show you. This wasn't the exact one that I was using in the picture, but this is the scraper. Oop. This is the scraper that you would use to scrape that glitter off of those reindeer and it comes off really easily. I let them soak for about a half an hour. I put, I just put hot water into the bathtub with a few squirts of the Blue Dawn dish soap. Let them soak for about a half an hour while I was working on another video. Went back, scrubbed on them for a little bit with an Ikea brush. Then I got the idea of this scraper and it just came off in sheets and it peeled off in big old gloppy parts and it just, it kind of looked like somebody had died in my bathtub. But anyway, the hardest part is getting the glitter off of the edges, but I'm doing red tones, so I'm okay with that red glitter showing. Now these came in silver, I think gold, and red. And so think about what papers or fabrics you want to use and maybe pick up a color that uh, coordinates with that because this is really hard to get off of the edges. It's just so curvy that the scraper won't go in there. I tried to use one of those like sponges that's half scrubby and half sponge, but even that was having a hard time. And then there's all these little uh, plastic holes. I guess that's probably pushed into the mold so that the glue has something to hold on to and doesn't just slide right off of the deer after they put the glitter on. So anyway, you do what works for you, but these just scraped off really easy. And don't worry about soaking them because they are plastic. Okay, I went ahead and did three. I thought about doing eight, and if they had had a Santa sleigh, I would have done eight, and I would have done the whole set and put them around my tree with cording to make the reins and all that good stuff. So you do what you want to do. If you see a sleigh, I'd say grab it. I'm hoping they'll get a sleigh. Uh, like I said before, I am borrowing this idea or using the idea from Glue Guns and Roses, and I will link her video below. She covered hers with fabric, and she talked about covering it in paper, and that, that was another option. And so I thought I would cover it in paper, and then we can compare and see what we like better. Um, part of the reason I'm seeing that fabric would work better is because the 12 by 12 paper it's just not big enough. So I'm going to have to glue it down, trim it off, and then piece together somewhere along the way. Okay, we're not going to cover the hooves, hooves, and we're not going to cover the antlers. I think I might take the antlers out and spray them black just to give them some extra sparkle, but I am going to cut those off and then end up gluing them back on, or I might just leave them be. I think I'm going to leave them be and I'm just going to brush them with some black paint. So let's go ahead and do that painting now. But I wanted to show you the three papers that I chose. Uh, Glue Guns and Roses, she did all three exactly on the, with the same fabric. And I thought that looked really cool, but I also wanted to see what it would look like with uh, some different papers that were kind of similar. So these two came out of the same paper pad, and this one came out of a similar paper pad that of those... Uh, 
Christmas Dollar Tree haul pads that I had shown you in that haul. And I just thought they kind of went together and I'm hoping that they're going to look good as a trio and we shall see. I went ahead and pulled out two pages of each just in case because I need to be able to match the stripes and that might be a little more challenging if any of you so you know how that goes. All right, I grabbed some Waver Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm just going to brush a little chalk paint onto my antlers. Now it's up to you whether you decide to do both sides or just one. Um, and on the glue guns and roses video, she cuts the antlers off and then reattaches them. I'm trying to do this with keeping the back looking as nice as possible. Uh, I don't mind where the antlers are setting. So I'm going to go ahead and go with what I've got here. Uh, the thing I like the least about this is these little round spots. So let me think about something here. Ha ha! If I turn my deer to face the other way, I don't have those round spots to deal with. That's what I'm going to do. So you can decide which way you want your deer to face. And um, I kind of wanted them to face the other way, but those dots are driving me crazy. So Okay, I'm going to set this guy over to the side to dry and I'm going to paint the other two. I'll be back. All right, I got the antlers painted. There's not a lot of difference. They just darkened up and it took off some of these scrapey marks. If you like a little bit of glitter on your Christmas crafts, you could totally cut these antlers off like the uh, Galon Glue Guns and Roses does and reattach them later. Or, and then you can leave them glittered and buy a gold one and that way you'll have the gold antlers that are kind of more realistically colored than black. Or you can paint them another color. You can paint them tan. I might end up painting them tan. I'm going to see how they look with the paper I've chosen. Now I showed you some scrap of paper that I was planning on using, but I was trying to figure out if I had enough. I didn't want to really waste two pieces of paper per deer, but I was willing to if that's what I needed to do. But then I got an idea. I remembered that I had some wrapping paper from Sands Club and Costco last year that's double-sided and it's pretty heavy duty. So I ran upstairs to look and look what I found. I'm going to do my deer in this wrapping paper and then it can be all one piece. I don't have to seam it together. I don't have to try to match it. And I'm hoping that the reindeer on the red side don't bleed through. So I'm going to cut some of this off. Paper from Sam's Club and from Costco. I don't know if it's the same brand. I don't know exactly, but it's good quality stuff. And then I can go ahead and get this decoupage on all in one fail swoop. And I don't have to, to worry about it so much. Okay, so I'm going to put my deer kind of at an angle because, well, I don't want the plaid to be exactly straight. So now that I have some bigger paper to work with, I've got a little more leeway with what I can do, which is awesome. So this side has little tiny marks, but they're not the big pits like this side is. So I'm going to use the smoother side. My reindeer will face to the left instead of to the right. I think I can live with that. And I'm going to go ahead and spread some Mod Podge all over this, but I'm not going to cover the hooves or the antlers. Okay. So I need to be a little bit careful while I'm brushing this on. I got this Mod Podge at the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is not the cheapest way to buy it, but I have a problem with Mod Podge clumping up on me when I buy it in a big bottle. So I like these little bottles. So I'm collecting some of these little bottles. Then I'm going to start buying it in the big bottles and refilling the little bottles. Then they'll stay sealed until it's time to use them. And I just, I like having the little bottle handy. It's just easier to use than having to pour it into a palette or something like that. Just don't put any Mod Podge on the hoof part, and that way um, it'll be just fine when you lay the paper over it. It won't stick there. I'm going to press it on, and my goal is to not have all three deer at the same angle. Now, if you had more wrapping paper choices, you could totally do 
the deer in three different patterns and colors or whatever. But you decide what you like, what goes with your decor. So I just have a brayer here and I'm just going to roll along my deer and get out as many bubbles as I can. And then while it's still wet, I like to flip it over. I like to flip it over and cut off as much of the extra paper as I can. And then I roll the edges one more time. The reason I do that is I think it just gets a better adhesion. I don't know. I could just be imagining that. But I always just go in and cut roughly around it. When it's dry, I will use sandpaper and sand off the edges. Just gets the extra out of the way. I've gone from that big, huge piece to this smaller piece. And I am going to let this dry on here completely before I attempt to put another coat of Mod Podge. Now, normally I do not Mod Podge over the top, but I think I'm going to need to with this one just because of the thin paper that I'm using. And also I just think it'll give it a more finished appearance. So there's the first one done. I'm going to let it dry and then I will put another one on. So I'm going to do my other two reindeer in the exact same way. And once they are dry, I will come back and show you how I'm removing any of the extra paper off the edges. Okay, I'm back. My reindeer are dry enough to do the next step. And they do have some bubbles in it, which is making me sad, but got a deal. All right, so I'm going to set two of them apart and just work on the one and show you what I've got to do with that. I've got some 80 grit sandpaper that came from the Dollar Tree in a pack. And I'm just going to sand along the edge of the reindeer shape. And that is going to peel the paper right off of the edge nice and clean. And then I will come back and put another coat of Mod Podge over the top and hopefully be able to smooth out some of these wrinkles. If not, we'll live with the wrinkles. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the sanding because you don't need to sit here and watch me do that. I'll show you a little bit in case you haven't seen my channel before. But as you sand, make sure that you're going down on the paper. You never want to come back up because that's going to peel it away. Okay, so go from the front to the back, never from the back to the front. I'm just getting that all off of there. Now, this is probably going to sand off some of those edges of glitter, if you were worried about those. And then once it's sanded off, I might have to go back in and touch up with some Mod Podge underneath, because it might peel away in a few spots. I'm going to cut off where the hoof is, and I wish I had cut that at a different angle, but that's life. It's almost going to look like the deer is wearing pajamas. Okay, I've got my deer all sanded down, so now I'm going to take Mod Podge over the top. And I am also going to paint it on the antlers because I don't like the look when it transitions from Mod Podge to no Mod Podge. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it that coat just to make it match. Now this is the time if you've got any edges that are peeling, make sure you get them stuck down. And I'm pushing down really hard on the places where there's bubbles. There's going to be wrinkles in this. I just can't get them all down. I will have to put one more coat over the top so I'm not worrying too much about my brush strokes being perfectly symmetrical and lined up. But on the next coat it will matter. So I'm going to go ahead and brush across 
I just keep finding little places that aren't stuck down. I'm going to brush across with this coat. A little piece floating away. If you've got extra stuff that keeps falling in there, you've got to get that out now. Okay. Here's that one. I'm going to let him dry. Oops, I've got some unstuck spot here. And that happens. It, it appears after you sand it. It's like maybe the Mod Podge dried a little bit too much in that spot before you get the paper down. It happens. Okay. In which case you just stick it back down. Alright, let me go put this guy over to dry and I'm going to do the other two in the exact same way. Okay, I lost a whole section of video, so here's what I did to make them stand up. I used one of those long dowels from the new craft section at the Dollar Tree, and I hot glued it with a lot of glue, and I used Gorilla Hot Glue to the back of the reindeer. And then I covered it with tape, and that's what you're seeing here, is the black duct tape, and that is Gorilla Tape. And then what I did on the other end is I took a plastic cup, and I mixed a plaster of Paris, and I stuck some rocks in there and I stuck the um, dowel rod into that plaster of Paris to harden up to be a stand. And then I put it into one of the galvanized buckets from the Dollar Tree and I stuck that down with the double sided foam tape that they have at the Dollar Tree that's the super glue brand. Okay. And that's how it stood up. Okay, so I'm trying to change up my camera angle just a little bit because I've had some complaints that uh, it was hard to see what I was doing from the overhead view. Overhead view is what I'll use for most things, but for something like this, I'm going to try to do it from the side to see if you can get a better view of what I'm doing. So I've got my reindeer in the plaster of Paris cup, and this is all dried up, and I did take and stiff stick some gravel rocks down inside while the plaster of Paris was still wet and so most of it is embedded into the plaster of Paris but I went ahead and left the duct tape on top of it just to hold in anything that's loose and I did use one bag of gravel from the Dollar Tree and um, I still had like one handful of gravel left but that just gives it a little more weight and a little more stability to the reindeer because they're pretty tall and I don't want uh, them to tip over and fall and break so I'm also going to be using some of these foam mounting squares these are the super glue brand ones they come you can get them at the Dollar Tree and uh, they're right next to the super glue in the super glue aisle so I'm taking two of them I don't know if you can see that there's two there and I'm going to take off the backing paper and I'm going to fold them together to make a double thick pad of foam mounting and the reason I'm doing a double thickness is because I'm going to attach the deer into a galvanized bucket from the Dollar Tree now, it's just the galvanized with the jute on it. it came out of the floral section area of Dollar Tree and the reason I'm doing that is because this cup, let me angle this down a little more, this cup has a lip on it. I need to make sure that whatever I attach this to the can with is making a firm contact between both surfaces. So I'm just peeling off the backing and I'm sticking it onto the cup in a triangle. Now, two thicknesses is a little more than I need but one thickness just barely gets it to the top of that lip and so I just I just thought a double thickness felt safer to me okay so I have all three on there I've pushed it down really well so I've got the tape on the bottom of my cup in a triangular shape so now I'm going to pull off the backing And I'm going to take my galvanized bucket and I'm going to place it down in my can. The reason I'm doing it into the can uh, temporary, I don't want it to be 
permanently attached with like E6000 because when it comes to storage, I want to be able to pull this part out and stack the buckets and just store, you know, just have to find a place to put the skinnier part. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is this is still a little wobbly. So I'm going to take some plain white tissue paper, ball it up and stuff it in around the cup. And this takes about five pieces. I actually did six on that one. <laughs> it just felt like it needed one more. Okay. And then I want to decorate this so it's not ugly on top. One thing you could do is plastic shatterproof ornaments. You could fill that in with that, but I only have one size. And so that's not really working to cover everything up. I'd have to really stack them and hot glue them out. And I don't want anything permanently attached for storage purposes. So I'm going to not do that. But my other idea is to do pine cones. Now I have these pine cones. They are ornaments. Whenever I see them on clearance after Christmas, I pick up as many as I possibly can because I'm always, always using pine cones. So I'm going to stick these in and with the pine cones, I have different sizes. So it's actually helpful to have different sizes to be able to stuff into places. Okay, that's the back side, and I think that that just adds to the rustic farmhouse look of what I'm going for. So there is my finished deer. This is my three reindeer project. Remember, this was inspired by Glue Guns and Roses, so make sure you go check out her video. I will link that below in the description box. But let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. This will be used to decorate the space between the top of my cabinets and the ceiling in my kitchen. And I can't wait to start decorating for Christmas and get those put up. So let me know what you think about it. This has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.